Welcome back to the deep dive. Today, uh, we're diving into a topic that honestly, everyone should know a little something about snake bite management. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things that we all hope we never, ever have to deal with, but uh, being prepared can really make all the difference. Totally. So we're going to break down the do's and don'ts if you ever find yourself in this situation. And, you know, we should be clear up front that while not all snakes are venomous, any bite should be treated seriously. Right. Identifying a venomous snake out in the wild can be really, really tricky, even for experts. It's a great point. So we're operating under the assumption that any snake bite could be a real emergency. Exactly. So let's say the worst happens and you or someone you're with gets bitten by a snake. What's the very first thing you should do? Call for help. 911. Absolutely. The absolute first step is to call EMS immediately. Every second counts when you're dealing with a potential venomous snake bite. Got it. Call 911 right away. Okay, so what then? Should we try to figure out what kind of snake it was? Yeah, if you can safely take a picture of the snake from a distance, that can be helpful for the medical team. But your safety and the victim's safety are top priority. Never try to catch or handle the snake. Okay, safety first. Makes sense. So while we're waiting for EMS, what can we do to help the person who has been bitten? The next crucial step is to keep the victim calm and reassure them. Anxiety and panic can actually increase heart rate which speeds up the circulation of venom through the body. So deep breaths are key. Exactly. And try to keep the bitten area still and position it below heart level. Below heart level. Why is that so important? Good question. Positioning the bite below the heart uses gravity to help slow down the movement of venom through the circulatory system. It's basic physics, but it can be really, really helpful. Okay, that makes sense. It's kind of like elevating a sprained ankle, but in the opposite direction. So we're trying to minimize movement and keep the bite lower than the heart. Got it. What about treating the wound itself? Should we try to clean it or? Gently cleaning the wound with some soap and water and covering it with a clean, dry bandage is a good idea. Simple enough. Are there any other things we can do while waiting for the paramedics to arrive? You know, it's more about what you shouldn't do. There are a lot of myths out there about snake bite treatment, and some of them can be downright dangerous. Yeah, that's what I was hoping we'd get into. I feel like I've heard so many different things over the years. Right. So let's bust those myths. What's the first one on the list? First and foremost, do not try to suck out the venom. Really? I thought that was like what you were supposed to do. It's a very common misconception, often perpetuated by, you know, movies and TV. Attempting to suck out the venom is not only ineffective, but it can also introduce bacteria into the wound and increase the risk of infection. Okay, that's good to know. So no sucking the venom. What about cutting the wound? Does that help at all? No, cutting the wound is also a bad idea. It just causes more tissue damage and increases the risk of infection. You're doing more harm than good. Got it. No cutting. What about applying a tourniquet above the bite? I've heard that can help slow the spread of venom. That's another dangerous myth. Applying a tourniquet can restrict blood flow to the limb, which is incredibly dangerous, and can lead to tissue damage and potentially make the situation much, much worse. So we're seeing a theme here. No sucking, cutting, or tourniquets. Seems like a lot of the like common knowledge is actually harmful. You're absolutely right. We need to stick to evidence-based practices. Okay, so what else is on the don't list? Another common mistake is applying ice to the bite. Really? I would have thought ice would help reduce swelling. Well, it's true that ice can help reduce swelling. In some cases, it's not helpful for snake bites. Ice can actually constrict blood vessels and potentially trap venom in the localized area, leading to further tissue damage. So that's actually counterproductive. Wow, I had no idea. And finally, avoid giving the victim alcohol or stimulants. Okay, that seems like bad advice in like any medical emergency. Mm. But is there a specific reason to avoid it with snake bites? Yeah, they can interfere with the body's natural response to the venom, and they can also complicate treatment by medical professionals. Makes sense. So we've covered a lot of ground here. Let's recap what we've learned so far. Absolutely. First, if someone is bitten, immediately call EMS. While waiting for help to arrive, keep the victim calm, immobilize the bitten limb, and position it below heart level. And just as important, do not attempt to suck out the venom, cut the wound, apply a tourniquet, or apply ice. And of course, do not give the victim any alcohol or stimulants. So many important points to remember. But it sounds like the main takeaway is to stay calm, call for help, and avoid doing anything that could make the situation worse. Exactly. Well, this has been incredibly insightful. Is there anything else we should keep in mind when it comes to snake bites? 
You know, there is. We've focused on immediate actions after a bite, but there's a lot you can do beforehand to prepare yourself. So, like, what kind of knowledge are we talking about here? The best way to prepare for a snake bite is to educate yourself about the snakes that are native to your area, especially the venomous ones. So I should hit the books and become a herpetologist or something. Huh. Well, you don't have to go that far, but familiarizing yourself with, you know, the types of snakes in your region, their appearances, their habitats, you know, in their typical behavior can really make all the difference. Okay, yeah. So, like, knowing what to look for and maybe how to avoid them? Exactly. Knowledge helps reduce the risk. And if a bite does happen, knowing, you know, the potential suspects can help the medical team identify the snake much faster and determine the appropriate treatment. Okay, well, this deep dive has been so informative. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. It's been my pleasure. I think we've covered everything we need to know about snake bite management, for now at least. Yeah, I think so. So thanks for joining us, everyone, and we'll see you next time on The Deep Dive. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.